Okay, so when we were in Amsterdam this this uh, past week at Blades Europe, we had actually had some of the new PES Wind magazines on our booth, uh, and some people flipping through them uh, really enjoyed some of the content. One of the curious things was that there was actually a bunch of companies there that had articles in them. Marones was there. Uh, we were there, of course, and there was there was a couple others. Was, oh, hey, I know these people. Or, hey, I know a little bit about this. Uh, so that was kind of neat. Um, one of the things that tripped the trigger for me in the PES Wind uh, magazine for this quarter is uh, an article about Nortec. So the reason it was, to me, Nortec is is uh, part of my old life, right? Nortec's a Norwegian company that uh, creates some subsea technology uh, in a lot of different ways. But their their big claim to frame is famed is ADCPs, which is a, a it's a long way of or it's a short way of saying acoustic Doppler current profiler. Okay, so now that seems kind of crazy, but what an acoustic Doppler current profiler is, is it's basically a way of measuring water subsea. So measuring water movement and flow. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons to do this. And the article kind of goes into some of them. Uh, the ADCPs, of course, Nortec makes a bunch of different ones. They make some uh, flat ones that go underneath vessels to track actual uh, vessel movement. So, right, like in a, in a, on an airplane, you have a pitot tube that tells you what your actual airspeed is, but that's different than the ground speed because okay. airspeed takes into consideration the wind that's flowing with you or against you, or, you know, at a whatever angle to the, to the plane to get the actual effect that the wind is having on the aircraft. So you can, and then that you compare that to your speed over ground that you might get with a GPS and they can be vastly different, right? If they're like, oh, we have a great tailwind. Well, the plane might think it's going 500 miles an hour because of the wind coming at its back. But you might be actually going 600 miles an hour on the ground. So an ADCP is actually that same kind of technology, but for vessels in the water. So it will actually, it shoots down, uh, like there's, it's a little kind of complicated. And maybe we can go into that about how it works. But it's measuring um, the current and flow of the water. Uh, if you have one underneath your vessel, it's under the vessel. So you may be sitting still in the, in a river, uh, but the ADCP will tell you that you're actually fighting a three knot current, even though your GPS tells you you're going zero uh, and the motors are on and you're moving or you're moving water so that you're fighting against that current. Uh, so how does this fit into what we talk about here in, in renewables? Of course, offshore wind. So an offshore wind, we, we've talked about it before, all the site characterization that needs to be done uh, before any kind of development can go in the water. You need to know what met ocean data. So what kind of currents are out there? What kind of wave heights are you getting? All of those kind of things, right? Uh, directions, speed, flow. And then you need to map the subsurface. Uh, so know exactly, you know, what, uh, you know, what depth the water is and if there's rocks down there, if it's mud or silt and what uh, what the topography, basically, what you look at on the surface of the earth, what that looks like on the seafloor. But then uh, also because we're driving piles or, or suction caissons below the mud line, you need to know what is uh, below the mud line. So you need to know the first 5 to 10, 20, 30, 40 meters of surface to be able to do geotechnical investigation on it to see if your uh, structure is actually going to hold up or be able to be installed or or cables are going to be able to be trenched in or whatnot. So there's a ton of work that needs to go offshore. Uh, the difficulty of offshore work, though, and this is where the ADCPs from Nortec come into play, positioning is very, very hard. You cannot use GPS on subsea instrumentation because GPS doesn't go through water. Uh, if, you want to, if you want to test this theory, um, I don't know, hold your, put your phone underneath a pool and see what happens to the GPS. It's just not going to work. <laughs> this may be a crude way of testing it, but hopefully it's waterproof. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so to get so to get uh, proper measurements, you need to combine a lot of sources to get a good uh, X Y Z location of your instrumentation and 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 orientation of it. Some of this comes in, um, you know, you can have GPS on the boat. You may know how long your tow line is and the direction you're going. So, if you're towing an instrument behind you, um, say, uh, you know, um. Uh, uh, echo sounder to give you depth and and map the seafloor. Great. So you know where your vessel is and where your tow line is. Say it's 40 meters behind you and you know you're heading this way. However, you may have a current coming against the vessel this way. So it's moving that off to the side. You don't know it's moving it though because 
you can't see it and the GPS can't see it back there. So now you're relying on adding an ADCP, an acoustic Doppler current profiler, to kind of tell you where it's moving sub C. And you may have to add other things like a USBL, like a, a short baseline acoustic sensor to be able to ping back and forth. And there's a very sophisticated software that will tie all these instruments together and give you good positioning. So you're, it's like um, uh, you can't make chicken soup out of chicken poop, if you've ever heard that before. That's a Wisconsin term. Has to be. It's, it's, it's termed a little bit different when we say it in Wisconsin, but same concept. <laughs> so you have to have good data in to get good data out, right? So if you're out there dragging these uh, instruments around the, uh, in the ocean and you don't have good measurements on where the data actually came from, then your analysis is going to be, you know, flawed from the beginning. So adding all these tools on, like the Nortec D, uh, or ADCPs or DVLs, Doppler Velocity Logs, will uh, make the, the actual analysis of the seafloor and site characterization more accurate. So it's not just boats driving around in, in grids out there. There's actually highly trained, um, uh, so highly trained personnel running extremely customized software uh, with very expensive instrumentation to be able to do these things correctly. So how does this affect uh, the, the one thing I'm really interested in, and we need to have them on the podcast, the Ridgeway Rock Bag Group? Does, if they have to know where the current flow is to place those bags properly, right? They just don't start dumping rocks randomly. Yeah, so ADCPs, uh, sometimes depending on where you're dumping things, you may put those out on the seafloor. So you can actually put these things on tripods out on the seafloor in regular areas and then you'll know the current and direction of the current live feedback to the vessel. So you can tether them or you can, you know, get information back and forth from USBL communications. But when they're doing big projects in, you know, like in the North Sea, there's always issues with um, scour. Scour being when, when currents flow past monopiles or flow over rock dumps, they create this, this basically, you know, the uh, water flow creates a scoop. It creates turbulence and it might move some, some sediment in the wrong direction. Uh, because they have two and three knot currents regularly sub C in the North Sea, uh, that's not an not an abnormal thing. You think that of the ocean as a big stable place, but the ocean is constantly moving at all depths. The water is. So if it's Ridgeway rock bags and you're out there, and the deeper of the water you're in, the more the current can play with you, right? So if you're on the surface and you're on a dynamic position hold and you're your big barge with the, you know the um, crane off the side is holding there well the position on the tip of the crane you thinking that it's going to go straight down the crane wire to where it's dumping by the time you get down there that rock bag is big it's getting pushed by the water you might be a couple of meters off and if you're a couple of meters off of the cable that you're trying to land on then you're not going to land on it and all of a sudden a year later or you do a post dump inspection with an rov you go uh hey are those rock bags missed man uh, and that's a big problem because now you got to go back, remobilize the vessel, and, and get them back in the correct places. Okay, this is really complicated. I would assume that they'd have to sample the ocean floor over a long period of time. It seems like the currents move around a little bit seasonally, right? Yeah, that's going to be a, like a meta ocean campaign, right? So that's where like Nortec makes they make stuff for everything, right? Nortec makes things to put on the bottom of your boat. They make things to put on survey instrumentation. They make things to have standalone meta ocean data collection. They make all kinds of stuff, but yeah, if you're talking meta ocean data, so like there's a company um, TGS. TGS is a Norwegian company. They specialized for a long time in uh, oil and gas data. So they had seismic data all over the world, onshore and offshore based on spec, right? So if you were an oil company and you were looking in this block, you could just call up TGS and say, hey, can you give me what you have for 2D seismic lines in this area? And they'll be able to tell you what they have and, and sell it to you at a premium. Uh, what, they, what they did a few years ago as a pivot, TGS is a very, very, very uh, smart company. Um, they, to get into renewables, they purchased 4C Offshore. So 4C Offshore was in the process of developing kind of spec data on meta, uh, but meta ocean data. So seafloor currents, um, wind resource, topside, uh, weather conditions, um, and not only seafloor currents, but mid-level currents, sea, uh, surface currents, surface temperatures, salinity, all these crazy measurements that you need to have. 
4C Offshore was developing a big database globally for all of those. Um, they started focusing on all the areas where renewable energy would be installed. So if there's an if there's an area where there's a lot of oil and gas activity, yeah, most of that data exists. But now you're starting to see renewables branch out where there is no oil and gas activity, say East Coast U.S. Uh, so there's companies out there collecting that data over large, uh, long campaigns, year two, three, four, five. Um, to get higher resolution data rather than just whatever you can, you know, download from NOAA online. Okay, this is really cool. I know I read through that article about Nortec and it was a lot to absorb because it's a very technical article, but it is interesting how much work goes into uh, the siting on offshore wind turbines and the, just knowing what the sea is doing is a major part of that. So if you're interested in offshore wind or onshore wind, you need to pick up the latest PES wind magazine. You can just get it online at PESWin.com. 